Hello, you two. I am Lachey. And happy Monday to everybody. I was just talking to my deaf viewers that I was having some difficulty this earlier day with my breathing. I feel a little bit better just now. I don't know what's that that off. Who knows? But anyway, the top it is on the love of God and learning how to store your prayers. It's not really so much showing you how to do it, just giving you some feedback, what I do. And um, go from there. But anyway, um, let's go and say a prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive us our debt, as we forgive us our debt towards. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory is forever. I pray over that everyone is watching my YouTube video will receive a message, blessing through the grace of God. In Jesus' name we ask and all. God bless and all, man. <clears throat> I'm going to go over all the verses that I have to go with this topic. And you can read it up for yourself. Most of you guys might already know, especially if you read the Bible concept, and you should know this one. One of them is from Matthew verse 2, 11, when Jesus was born from Virgin Mary, and that you, we all understand that was God's only child, being born here many years ago on, on earth. And then you have Matthew's, actually I'm not going to do the Matthew one, I know it's Matthew, yeah, Matthew's first, um, chapter 2, verse 11. And then the other one is John, um, St. John, chapter 3, verse 16. Everyone should know that God will love us the only, God will love the world that he gave his only son. Who shall ever believe in him shall perish, shall not perish. She'll have an everlasting life. And then the other one is Matthew's 20, Matthew's chapter 21, verse 22. Whosoever believes, I'm going to just call into that one. And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Now, we'll explain my, my chapter my verses that's relating to these topics. The two that I said relates to God so love the world are the love of God. God loves you. He loves you. He automatically loved you the minute you were born. But it's the thing that we need to remember. Don't forget to love yourself first. God, God already loves you. Automatic. That's an automatic thing. But when you are saying, oh, I don't love me, I don't like me, I don't like that's, then don't look for anything on the outside. It means you shouldn't be trying to get a relationship. You shouldn't be trying to ask people to love you. You need to love yourself first. You got to love yourself first. No one can do it but you. No one can do it but you. No one can do it but you. You got to love you. And how to love yourself is show that you love yourself. Look in the mirror and say, I love, I love you. Look in the mirror. I'm going to use a sound for me. Lachey, I love you. You were beautiful today. You know, the more that we um, say a positive thing about ourselves, the more we will get in the habit of doing it. You can't expect the world to love you and you don't love yourself. You got to do it first. Ain't no one can do it for you. You got to do it first. You got to love you. It ain't about um, 
we all want someone to love us. Don't get me wrong on that. But you gotta do, you gotta make sure the one number one key is you love you. And once you got that down, then you you are going to feel the connection with God's love and His embrace, which I'm automatically love me. I automatically know God's love and His embrace with me. So it's impossible to dislove me. I could never be without loving me. I try to do, I treat myself really good in every way. You probably all wonder why I don't wear my hair because my hair, I cherish it. It's a precious jewel for me. And because I am a spiritualist, I don't believe in showing that hair all the time. Because when we pray, we should have our hair covered. And I pray so much that, uh, yeah, a better idea to cover it anyway. But I do it out of the kind, I do it as a habit. But I cherish all of me. All of me. I love me. And I thank God for loving me and showing me how to love me. And believe me, you can do the same. Don't eliminate that. Don't let anyone tell you can't love you. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't be loved. You are loved. Automatically by God. And some people don't understand you, but God loves you. He does. He gave his only son to die on the cross for, for us. So you know God loves us. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Now, I was saying to my deaf and hard of hearing viewers about prayer. There's something that people don't do enough of. You can have everything you ever wanted. I, I to this day, would not want to be in a rich man's shoe in the way the rich man feels. I am rich through the grace of God. I don't want to be rich in an evil way. I wanted to be rich in the grace of God. Because the more I'm rich in the grace of God, I feel like I want to have everything I ever wanted. And usually, I always do. But this a key that I want to make sure everybody remembers. Some people just tend to pray when they need something. How about praying when you don't need anything? Learn how to do that. Thank God for things when you don't you don't need them for anything. I pray constantly, and so I'm not, and, and now I'm not even asking for things now. I'm just saying thank you, Jesus. No, once in a while I like to talk about my health. I pray about that, you know. But I thank God that every breath I take, I'm glad I'm able to breathe. Um, I thank God, you know, for waking me up in my right mind, and you know, I. The more you thank God, the better you will feel. Prayer is automatically, easily to do. Let's talk about when I pick up a penny on the ground. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Go to the plane. A quick one. You don't have to be long with prayers. You do not have to be long with prayers. But you should at least have one or two or a couple of prayers being longer every day. Especially if you're a Christian or a spiritualist, you should be able to pray a couple of times a longer prayer than a usual one. But those little ones do count too, because God knows you're acknowledging them. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Like, so you get a you get check in the mail. Thank you, Jesus. Or when you get paid. Thank you, Jesus. You should be thanking God. You are, because you be saying, when the thing I want, the reason why I'm mentioning that, because the more you acknowledge the good prayer, you're storing that prayer for when you're at times you're hurting and needing him. He's going to help you because you've been acknowledging him all those times. But we have to think like that. It's the same with the kids. They need their mom and dads. But they need them for good and bad. They don't just need them for you know, certain things. It's the same procedure. God is our Heavenly Father. So He 
So he needs to hear the good of thumbing you as well as the bad. You do both. God will recognize you more too. And I believe that, you know, the more that we acknowledge the thing that we don't need anything from him, we just want to say thank you. Those are the good things. And I believe that constantly. Thank him. Thank him for things. Yes, yes, yes. And, and but mean it when you're praying. Believe in it. Don't, don't pretend it. Believe in it, what you're praying for. Thank him. And he's going to know if you mean it when you say thank you for, for the things you... Because if you did that automatic one, you already acknowledged him. I do it out of the blues. Sometimes we have a good laugh about something with the, the thank you. So I like doing that. But the more we do that, the better God will feel. Believe me, you will feel good too because you're doing it automatically. You should be doing it on a regular basis. You don't expect anything out of it. And I know we do have to come for knees every now and then. And believe me, the more that we do that, the more we see it. God is with us. God has taken us all the way. All the way. We got to believe that. And trust in Him. I just encourage you that when you're praying, don't just always call him for the, your needs. Call him when you don't need him. And you really should be praying if, if you are a person that is a Christian, a Christian, pray over your food. Um, pray over your paychecks. I'm not going to lie about this. When I was used to actually have to go to work, I work, but this type of work is my own business, so that's not, I, it is a blessing to have that job, but you got to sacrifice more to earn the money, whereas that job, you will constantly go to work, you'll get that paycheck. So anyway, um, I used to pray before I got to work, and I just did that automatically to say, Lord, allow this day to be a better day, you know, whatever. And believe me, I had a lot of challenging. I had a lot of challenge when it came to work. Work was not easy at all. It was a, it was battles. Every angle of the way with a lot of battles. But I'm telling you, the more you acknowledge God in everything of your life, you will see your blessings being received one by one. You know, I have never lived on the streets. And I thank God for that. Because the more I think about it, I said, the Lord never allowed me to go on the streets. He always made sure I had a roof over my head, food to eat, clothes to wear. <coughs> Even when my family had that fire. Well, my mom was thinking I was still living there. And I said, no, Mom, I don't live there. You know, I just had some of my stuff there and some of my stuff not there. And it just worked. It just worked to silly self out. I had about eighty percent of my stuff at my friend's house that I was living in, and Mom was thankful for that because imagine if I had not had all my stuff, most of my stuff there, I would have been screwed. So we have to think about the positive out of that. You know, I still, you know, I still. May, I still had a place to live. My parents, my family didn't go to the streets either. Someone opened their their doors to them. To this day, mom says thank you constantly. I'm telling you. you if you believe in God and you trust in him and you thank him for everything you got, you will never be hurting. God don't let his children go under. He never does. He never does. The only way you start not seeing the good coming out of it, because if you're being negative, well, you're surrounding negative. Don't believe me. It, it, it backfires. Oh, yeah, I do. So, I, trust me. 
That's why I always thank God for everything I have because I I I get I, I this is something I'm gonna point out because I don't like it. People are not trailer trash, so they need to stop saying that. Think about your bed a little more harder. I have I when someone tells me that I said you know what please don't say that. At least they got a roof over their head. How about that? Hmm? Just because I've all, and believe it or not, as a, a growing up, I do, I would love to live in a trailer, you know. I, for one, I'm always, i a curious child. I mean, now I may not want to, but, you know, back then I did. So that's why, like, I got upset with people when they, you know, said the thing they were saying and stuff. It was, it was just unbelievable. So, you just need to think of this. Thank God for everything you have because you don't have to have nothing. We gotta remember that God can take it all. That's the reason why I don't like the rich man. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be in his shoes. I always, I feel like this. God always gives me enough money to maintain and more. So, what do I need to be in that rich eyes? You can't take, you can't, when you die, you can't take it all with you. So, that's one of the reasons why I don't want that. Mm -mm. I'd rather just have enough and a little bit in savings to go a long way. Because, you know, emergencies do fly up and you sometimes out of your, out of your means. So, it's very important to have that. But other than that, that's the way I, because I feel like this, I'm rich in Christ. I have God in my life, and because I have Him in my life, there you go. And that's why I'm encouraging you, Christians and spiritualists, please, please, remind, reminding you, don't forget to say thank you for everything you have. Because believe me, it can be gone like that, and be wondering, whoa, what happened? Exactly what I say to him. I say the same thing to him. I do not have a topic for tomorrow, so I am just going to have to do a surprise on you guys because the play, the topic I was going to do tomorrow is actually kind of what I threw up today, so I apologize for that. So I am not going to, I am just going to surprise you guys with a topic, and that's the way we're going to do that. And like I said, this whole week is about the loving power. So yes, yes, yes. That's why I'm telling you guys to always first remember this, to love yourself. And if you don't know how to develop that love for yourself, pray about it because God can guide that through you, through your spirit. And like I said, talking to a mirror, writing, um, love, um, writing a positive thing in a journal or a notebook. Um, I used to have a, I'm going to used to say, you know how you have one of those, um, what is that? Have a, uh, I used to have a recorder that I would record myself. And that helped me get the steam off so I, to develop my love for me. Because I know sometimes I'm mad or sometimes I want to, I want to, I want to get my steam off. And, and this is a, a good way to help you love yourself. The more you get all the anger out of you, you will develop loving yourself because you're